We've got Wonderboy Thompson that's fighting on the card as main event against T. Woodley. But we're the people's champ. We're, we're the people's main event here. Everybody's saying that. And I believe 150% into it. And uh, you guys are going to get exactly your money's worth, baby. Isn't it, you know, it's ironic, but it's, it's also better that you guys were supposed to fight twice, but it was just a three rounder. And now, Destiny put you guys together again for a five round fight. Does that enhance the fight anymore, or you're still just going to put in work regardless? You can't hype the fight up as much as it's going to be. I mean, you have two bulls that are going to go after. Actually, you have one bull and you got one matador. And this is how it is, is I see how this guy fights, and I've been studying him for the last couple of years. Same vice versa. He fought a couple like uh, light guys. I mean, his padded record, I, I say that. He's never been in deep waters, and I'm a hammerhead. And he's dealing with a shark, and this dude's a barracuda. And so I'm going to eat his ass up, bro. I'm going to beat him up. I'm going to put him in deep waters. I'm going to make sure that his conditioning is put in the check. I'm going to derail that hype train, man. And his, his head is just way too far up there. I think it's so far up there that he just, I don't know. I, I really don't care. 1.9 million followers are going to follow us. But I have... 112k and every single one of them I've earned and I love that. So you're staying humble regardless of the belt, regardless of the accolades, you're staying humble and grounded and that's how you got to this point. That's how I got here is being humble but it's something different completely different than me and it would be so easy to hype myself up to all of this. You guys don't want to see me hype myself up to this level because I won't even talk to you guys. I've heard you call him a bully a couple of times. Why do you consider him a bully? The way he fights, the way he acts, what, what, what about him makes him a bully? His whole opinion? entire, his whole entire aura. You know what I mean? My wife and I, we were sitting there trying to check my coach in, and their whole entire squad was surrounding us. It's a whole kind of mentality that they have. I don't understand it. It's their team. They want to try to bully us. You know what happens to bullies, especially around me? You'll find out soon, buddy, because Josh Thompson tried to get in my way when I laid my fern down inside there at the weigh-ins that one day right, when we were there, and he went stepped over, and he wanted to put his forehead in me. What happened? I made his ass bleed. You know, he, he's been saying he's not only going to beat you, but he's going to break you. What, what do you make when he says not only is he going to beat you, but break you specifically? I could, you know, besides the hype, he can try to break me. You see that belt that's over there? Yep. That don't mean nothing to me. The guy wants to say he wants to break me? I said, dude, I already had my arm broken in a fight already. And I kept fighting the rest of the fight. I even knocked Michael Johnson down with that arm. I love holding my baby boy. Hey, and I know there's other people waiting to ask, so I want to ask you a different question real quick before uh, I let, let other people ask. I know you're Mexican, you follow boxing. Right now, Canelo and, and Chavez are about to fight. Big boxing fight. I want to get your thoughts on it. Who do you think is winning that fight? How do you see it playing out? I like Canelo. What, I like why Canelo. do you see it? like him? Just got a feeling, man. Uh, the other day, I wanted to have the opportunity to talk to Chavez, and uh, we were over at ESPN to court this, and then he gave me a chance to talk to Chavez. I like Chavez. My whole entire family, my wife's family likes Chavez. But I got to go with Canelo, and if that boy hit the bag like he did preparing for the fight before Mayweather, he's gonna, <laughs> the other guy's going to have his hands full. You know, uh, this boxing UFC thing, a lot of talk about it. What would happen if you face Canelo? Would you, would you, is that somebody you would be able to face? Is your boxing Absolutely. level at that level? How would that Absolutely. play out? Absolutely. I'm an athlete. Growing up, I was a three-sport athlete, football, baseball, and wrestling. I'm tough as nails. And I was a right outside cornerback. And uh, I was that guy that kicked off, and I was the guy, the first one down there, hitting the guy and tackling him. I'm a game changer, man. And it doesn't matter. If we want to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you see me go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them. And I started with boxing, man. The first time I got into MMA, somebody gave me a pair of boxing gloves. They showed me a couple of drills on the bag. And from then, it was just history, baby. So boxing might be in my future. A couple of us were talking last night, and uh over beers and we're saying that this might be the sort of highest level MMA fight we can remember. I mean, maybe Jones Cormier and Trevor Pound for Pound, just guys who, you know, are on these hot streaks are coming in so well respected. Is that how you view this? I mean, is this the best fight that the UFC could really put together? I think it's really great. I mean, the matchmaking is really smooth here. I mean, obviously we're the best in the world for what we do. Uh, I mean, what other better person do you have besides a Sambo extraordinary and a wrestling phenomenal? What's going to happen is you're going to see a class of luchadors go in there, man. And it's going to be the best man wins. And that's how I really take it. Win or lose, I'm going to walk away from this as a champion. Because I put in my time. I put in my effort. But I know how to lose. And I know how to come back from a loss. Not a lot of people know how to do that. And I don't think Khabib would know how to do that, especially off of one loss. Because with a 24-0 record, especially with the padded in the front part, I've seen him cry, dude, especially when he won. When he beat T-Bow, when he knew that he lost. I can't wait to see him lose. What is he going to do? What is the key to kind of bounce back from a loss then? I mean, it's something that you've seen a lot of, you know, people like Ronda not coming back. Uh, you know, what's, what's the key? What's your secret? Don't lose focus. It's right here in my tattoo. It says T-S-K-Y-H. It says think strong, keep your head. I've been keeping that same mentality since I've been in high school. My mom told me that. She's like, you know what, you're, you're, you're kind of a mental case sometimes. You always get in your own head. I'd be pitching, dude, and my pops would come out there and he wouldn't say anything. He would be like, I walk, 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 walk. Shit, can I get out of this inning? 
and I'd be like just thinking too much in my head instead of like focusing on what's at hand, which is having fun. Having fun is what I do, and when I'm out there doing my salsa stuff, you know, I, I call, you know, I might be a little cocky, but it, for me, it's just finding that groove, finding that spot, finding that strike zone, finding that place where I can pit, throw that pitch and turn two, boom, we make that play. Let's get out of this inning, baby. Let's go, and I got five innings here. And this dude, this dude ain't ready for what I got for him. Do you think that too much has been made on his side that he might be, whether he says he's not, about Conor McGregor, that when he gets in Saturday, he's not going to real, he's going to be thinking about the wrong thing? Is that over there, it seems like every question's about not you. And that, should that, could that help you on Saturday night if everything's about somebody else? I don't care. Honestly, I really don't. I mean, you have McNugget sets always in the picture. He says he might be there, but oh, we're not marketable enough. We're not. I don't give a shit, dude. If you're next in line, you have the belt, you're gonna have to fight either way. Uh, that's just how I see it. I mean, if you don't take the fight, you're a pussy. Straight up, man, you're in the wrong sport. Go box. Boxing's a tough sport. They're gonna chew you up and eat you, and spit you out. I mean, we're in a man's sport, man. I, I don't like to talk too much, but when I do talk, I, I speak to the point. So, is he worried about me? Yeah, he's worried about me. Is he worried about that belt? Yeah, I mean, do you see me looking at the belt and caring about it? Be like, that's mine, I'm gonna get it, and blah, blah, blah. No, dude, I got a fucking brown belt on right now. It's cool. And I represent 10 Planet Jiu-Jitsu with my brown belt too. So the next belt that I really want is my black belt. That means I'm putting in my time and my effort. This is something in my mixed martial arts journey that is beautiful. If you're not taking your ups and downs, especially in this community, dude, you're in the wrong sport. Go play tennis. Nothing against tennis people because I hope my baby boy picks up baseball or tennis. <laughs> Stay away from the sport, man. Tony, uh, speaking of 10th plan, I talked to Eddie Bravo a couple nights ago, and he said without giving away too much that he thought that the game plan could be very similar to the way you train to face RDA. W would you agree with that assessment? Uh, they're both around the same kind of st uh, stylistic fighters. Uh, RDA has a little bit more Muay Thai background, um, but the Muay Thai background is not Muay Baran, like myself. I practice Muay Baran, if you guys are familiar with Muay Thai. This is straight from Thailand. And my coach, uh, Coach Billy Shai, Coach Billy Fonwa, he's uh, trained by Nuckweed. And you guys do your homework who Nuckweed was. And this dude was one of those guys that would fight at like maybe 65 kilos versus 115 kilo guys. Not afraid to take any shots or go in there. And especially with Eddie, we know exactly what we're doing. We've been drilling day in, day out, making sure that we're hitting our points, making sure our flexibility is there, and making sure that our mental focus is there. I got my coach Dave Mills that's right behind you. Check him out, guys. That's the guy that got me at Grand Valley State University. He's the one that helped me uh, initiate this mental toughness that I have. I've always had it, but when you get to a college level and you can hone that talent and you can start to mold it and form it and shape it, that's what I took to me over in California when I first started my MMA journey because it was the mold that was starting to get there. And what I had to do was trust in that, in that training that I had in college, and that I had in high school, or my pops and everybody else that gave me that opportunity and to mold it even further. And this is what you see today. You see a professional, you see me mature from the ultimate fighter. It's a completely different atmosphere here, man. And I really try to be serious about it, be professional, and try not to let my heads float up in the clouds because I got little guys looking for me to be a good example for them. I'm not perfect. I will never say that I'm perfect. But perfect practice makes perfect, and I practice a hell of a lot harder than them. So, you have a chance Tony, you talk about how it would mean to be a great Latino champion in combat sports at all, like, you know, with like Chavez him on the boxing side, how would it be to develop your legacy? and your lineage all at the same time in combat sports and MMA. You know what I got called yesterday was a fake Mexican. Wow. I was like, what the fuck is that? I was like, what's a fake Mexican? I was like, I got fake blood running through me? Like I'm not born in the United States? Like I'm not Mexican, I'm not Latino? That kind of shit means like, you know what, you guys are all haters. I mean, especially coming from a Latino. Because I mean, I'm representing much more than just my country. When I was in Mexico City, it was dope. I brought that energy back with me. I don't have to wear a sombrero. I don't have to represent the flags. I mean, I know who I am and where I'm from. It's something I believe in. And I think a lot of other people will need that inspiration to make sure that they believe in something else too. Because if they're filling in their heads with all the bullshit that's out there, calling me a fake Mexican, you guys got issues, man. Because I'm the realest G in here. I'm keeping it OG, original genius status. I'm not a gangster, but I'm in there. I am fucking gangster because I will put my threat towards that dude. You know, you call me a fake Mexican, bro, or anything like that, that's cool, man. That's on your opinion.